Welcome to our online service of healing at St. Mark's and St. John's Episcopal Church. It is wonderful to have you here with us today. We offer this service to provide a space to hold for God's divine presence. I invite you to open your hearts and hands and mind to the love of Christ today and take in a deep breath. Today we commemorate Josephine Margaret Bakita, the first black woman to be honored as a saint in the modern era. In the wilderness, water brings life. Seek us out, O God, and take us to the water. In the word of a God, the good news gives light. Seek us out, O God, and fill us with understanding. Here is the water of life, the word that feeds, and the food of eternity. Come and praise creation that provides abundance. Amen. Let us pray. O God of love, who delivered your servant, Josephine Margaret, from the bondage of slavery to the true freedom of your service, grant to the wounded your healing grace in mind, body, and spirit, and to your church the zeal to combat exploitation and slavery in all its forms. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say to the Lord, You are my refuge and my stronghold, my God whom I put my trust. He shall deliver you from the snare of the hunter and from the deadly pestilence. He shall cover you with his pinions, and you shall find refuge under his wings. His faithfulness shall be a shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of any terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, of the plague that stalks in the darkness, nor of the sickness that lays waste at midday. A thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Your eyes have only to behold to see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation. There shall no evil happen to you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lyre and adder. You shall trample the young lion and the serpent under your feet. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I am with him in trouble and I will rescue him and bring him to honor. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while, he refused, but later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually asking. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Reading this gospel and reflecting on persistence in prayer can be a little challenging. I can only imagine the number of times we have given up in persistent prayer because what we were praying for didn't come quickly enough. 
for our liking. And all of those judges in our lives that are working against us, that don't have the respect that for us that we need, that aren't looking out for their neighbors. And we keep consistently and persistently praying for justice. This widow in this parable was strong. She did not give up and she did not stop persisting until the judge yielded to her. And I wonder what impact we would have if we had the persistent faith and courage and bravery that this widow did. So often in scriptures, widows are perceived as, as weak or on the margins or less than in certain ways because of who they are. But this one was strong. She was lamenting. She was persistently praying for God's justice and I'm reminded of how powerful of a tool lament is. And I don't think it's something that we're very good at. I think sometimes we need to sit in our lament and have that persistent time of prayer to seek justice, to hope for it, to look for God's presence and for God's justice. I was reminded of all of the times that I have not been great <laughs> at persisting, but there was one in particular where I, for so long and for so many times, wanted to give up on God and on faith and on church and on community because I didn't see God's justice and righteousness coming quickly enough for me. But I stuck with it and I'm very grateful that I did because that persistent prayer, although a bit grueling, and full of lament, eventually led to such a flourishing of God's love and presence before me, found in community, found in a church, found in friends and beloveds, and in every person that I'm able to see the face of Christ in, day in and day out. And that did not happen quickly. It took a lot of persistence and a lot of prayer to see that come to light. And it's with that that I'm reminded that God does hear us even when it's challenging or even when it doesn't seem like it. That persistent prayer for justice and mercy is one that is hard to do and hard to say. And in this closing question of when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? I think that he will, but it might, might not be where we might expect it to. I think persistent prayer shows up in a lot of places that we wouldn't imagine. And when we think about the persistent cry for justice, I can only imagine the number of people and situations that are waiting for that justice from God. From a woman and a mother waiting for benefits to feed her children and persistently praying for them. From an unhoused person who really needs an affordable and safe and warm place to be and that persistent prayer. And from our communities that are fighting for food justice and seeking food security, the persistent prayers that come along with that. So let us be persistent in praying, in fighting for justice, and seeking God out wherever that may come. God hears us. God grants justice. Let us be persistent together. Amen. As we affirm our faith, we say, we believe in God above us, creator of all things, sustainer of all life. We believe in Christ beside us, companion and friend, redeemer of all the broken pieces of our universe. We believe in spirit deep within us, advocate and guide who lives with us eternally. We believe in God's resurrection created world where all things are fixed and all creation fits together in vibrant harmonies. We believe in God above, beside, and within, 
God, yesterday, today, and forever, the three in one, the one in three. Amen. We pray for healing and forgiveness from squandering resources, abusing our companion species, and polluting the habitat we share. God, heal us. From the folly of imagining ourselves free from the fate of your whole creation, heal us. For repentance and the determination to begin our stewardship anew, heal us. Lord, turn our praises into hands that clothe the naked, arms that comfort the afflicted, tables that host the stranger, and tables that support the weary so that your name may be praised by those who live and die. We give you thanks and praise, O God of creation, for the grandeur of all you have made, saying, we thank you, God. We give you thanks and praise, O God of love, for the many blessings you have given us, saying, we thank you, God. We thank you, O God of second chances, for the forgiveness you bestow on us during our darkest times, saying, we thank you, God. We thank you, O God of companionship, for the relationships and partnerships you have blessed us with, saying, we thank you, God. We pray for the people, land, water, air, flora and fauna, and creatures of the earth. Especially today, we pray for all of those who are persisting for justice and equity for those on our margins. We thank you, God. Gracious God, make us always thankful for your loving providence and grant that we, remembering the account that we must one day give, may be faithful stewards of your good gifts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. We pray together. Eternal Spirit, life giver, pain bearer, love maker, source of all that is and that all shall be, father and mother of us all, loving God whom is in heaven, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your kingdom of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread that we need for today, feed us. For the hurts that we inflict on one another, forgive us. In the times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love now and forever. Amen. A seasonal winter prayer for us today. Holy Trinity, in the midst of winter, when the days are cold and wind can pierce, remind us of the warmth of your love. In the midst of winter, when days are short, dawn comes late and dusk arrives early, remind us that in the darkness, your light still shines. Remind us that Easter is but a short time away. Amen. I invite you to go from this service with joy, securely abiding as branches of the true vine. Go and tell the story of faith that is given to you by the one who never lets you go. Seek out those who abound with sacred questions and be ready to answer a mystery with love. The wisdom, love, and grace of God strengthen you to be God's hands and heart in the world. And the blessing of our creator, redeemer, sustainer be with you today and always.